Hello everyone, look at her. She's dressed in not a hoodie, hair is out, earrings are in, liked from the gods. Uh. I'm sorry about not posting last week, but I really just didn't want to do much of anything last week. Um, so when I first started teaching, I came here straight from college. I was not an education major, I was not an English major. I got my TEFL certification through online classes and then came to Korea to teach. Um, also, I came in the middle of the year in Korea. School here actually starts in March and I came in August. So I came in the middle of the year, um, practically the end of the year really. and. I didn't get to do a lot of the things that I wanted to do and I, I felt really discouraged um, the first few months that I was here because I like had these big plans, I actually made a few lesson plans but I didn't plan too far ahead because I didn't know what the students knew, I didn't know the students personalities um, and I didn't know their interests so I kind of planned um, based off of what I asked my co-teacher what he thought would be good to teach the students and that failed very quickly. <laughs> um, as much as he is like an amazing teacher, an amazing co-teacher, um, he definitely wanted the students to learn things that would be helpful for them in daily life. So things like going grocery shopping, things like um, have getting telling directions receiving directions um things like going to an airport and traveling such scenarios and categories are often used for learning specific vocabulary and grammar patterns so i understood why he wanted me to go over these with the students but after doing about a week or two of this, I I gave it like a solid two to three class periods because initially I thought maybe the students just aren't warmed up to this yet or I and I also just didn't know their levels so I kind of wanted to use this as a like gauging moment. Um, but you could tell pretty instantly that they weren't enthused about going over directions. Um, one of them honestly vocalized, not directly to me, but vocalized that they have already learned directions, like why are we going over this, we're in middle school, it was, so, you know, then I kind of had to change directions, but I also, again, didn't know what they knew because we had only done like this much of the class. Hey guys, just wanted to pop in real quick and tell you what are some better questions to ask your co-teacher. So, number one, what subjects, topics, or grammar points you should teach the students or you should focus on in your class? Number two, what do the students like? Obviously, not all of them like the same things, but to get like a, sm a short list going of what the students are interested in will help you to adapt your lessons. And number three, what is the class's personality? Each class has their own specific personality because it's a bunch of students, probably like 20 to 30 students in one classroom, and they all blend together in some type of way that is unique to each class. And I actually teach at four different schools, which if you are coming in here as an EPIC teacher, you might be teaching at multiple schools, which means you may only be at one school once per week. Um, I am at my schools once a week, so for the most part, it's really difficult to get to know my students, um, or at least it was in the beginning. Like, when I first came here, it was the middle of the year, I see my students once a week. It was very difficult to actually get to know them and build a relationship and rapport with them. Now, I know my students, so it's it kind of just, it's able to flow a lot better. I still suck at planning for my first year students because it's so difficult to talk with them. But for the most part, my older students, it, it things run very well now. Um, and I want to make sure 
to tell you guys like if it starts off kind of rough and like talking to your co-teacher about what they would want you to teach um, doesn't work the first time you should definitely continue to talk to them continue to ask them questions uh, because that's something I didn't do um, my co-teacher is very busy a lot of your co-teachers may be very busy people but at the end of the day they are there as your main co-teacher or as your co-teacher to help you and you are supposed to work together so it's going to be difficult <laughs> but definitely kind of build a habit of asking maybe every week hey has anything changed in the schedule um, I was thinking about doing this for next week's class what do you think or hey what are you doing in your class maybe if you maybe even if you have like um, some time on a particular day where you're at that school you could even ask them to to sit in on some of their classes to see how and what they're teaching um, I did do that and that I think really helped me to um, build on what I do in my own class the other thing that I want to say before I get down into like the nitty gritty is if you have students who do not participate, do not feel bad. Um, I feel like that was another thing that really got to me when I first got here was there were some students who are very like on it, they're um, very enthusiastic, they'll say hi to you, they'll constantly want to talk with you and they'll be... Um, sitting in the front of the class they even if they're like even when their friends are talking they'll say hey be quiet like class has started they'll help you essentially in the class right but there are always going to be at least two or three students who just don't want to do anything and that is not your fault um you can definitely try to encourage them. You should try to encourage them to participate. You should try to encourage them to, you know, develop their skills and learn English if, because a lot of them probably um, don't know anything more than, hi, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. Fine. And you? Like, those are usually the students who only know about that much English. And it's because usually they either find it difficult they flat out just don't like the subject, which we all have a subject we don't like. Um, or there has been inconsistency in their lessons or where they have not been able to drill as much, even though initially they may have, they may have actually liked learning English along the way they might have lost that fire. Um, but that's something that, you know, as a teacher, it might be difficult, especially because you may be going to several schools like I do, but it's really important to kind of have some space to get to know your students. And it's not going to happen instantly, trust me. <laughs> um, don't feel too bad about it. It happens in just, you know, just nay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so how do I plan my lessons now? Well, uh, the school year in Korea starts in March and the winter break is usually the longer of the two winter and summer breaks. Um, so I actually do try to plan all of my lessons for my four different schools during the winter break. And the way that I do this is I come up with a theme. I either, for the middle schoolers, I usually look at their textbooks and I'll take one chapter and run with it. <laughs> like one of the books that I have, it does like this kind of mystery, um, crime, um, like riddle-esque. There's, there's a lot of going on in this one chapter, but it, it kind of goes all into that one realm. And it's teaching and then the grammar patterns that are in that um, specific chapter are like passive voice. So this year especially I kind of just took that chapter and ran with it. I was like cool we're just gonna do a whole semester long lesson of 
crime solvers we'll look at different crimes fake crimes obviously we'll look at different fake crimes we'll try to you know practice our reading and understanding with passive voice because passive voice i feel like comes up mostly when you are in a crime-esque situation or if you're watching the news and stuff so it it was more relevant to present it in that way and i thought it would be fun because you can kind of do this like murder mystery game at the end where the students can figure out who the killer is or who the kidnapper is who like whatever you want to do um so that's what i did for this year now because of the current perpendicular we are in that didn't go exactly to plan um but i do think it was still a very good lesson plan and i will probably use it this year with um a new set of students because it's for a specific grade but that is one example of like just taking a lesson from a book and running with it you know um the other thing that i will do is again looking at the textbook and seeing which patterns you think your students will struggle with the most so for me um for this year for this past year i did think that my students would struggle the most with passive voice because passive voice is like i don't even understand why it exists really um, <laughs> this job makes you question english so much i don't really understand why passive voice exists because most of the time we speak in the active voice um and then in these very certain instances where you're describing things it just it uh, <laughs> it doesn't make sense unless you give it context so i when i saw this chapter specifically and i saw this grammar pattern i was like oh yeah we need to do this so you know finding a grammar pattern within the book if you if your co-teacher does allow you to do whatever you want and you don't have to follow the book and they do the book portion in their class if that's your setup for co-teaching then i definitely recommend you know choosing the most difficult patterns the ones that you think that they'll struggle with a lot and really just like doing a variety of things with that grammar pattern repeating that grammar pattern um and it can be like a subconscious thing too it doesn't have to be all always in their face later on in the year if you decide okay they're getting a little annoyed <laughs> with passive voice um then you can you know start to just do you can do like a few weeks of powerpoint games where not a few weeks but like <laughs> you can do a class of powerpoint games where it's a bunch of different trivia questions about things that they hopefully might know maybe about like korea and stuff but then word a few of the questions not all of them in passive voice that way they kind of see a mixture of the grammar patterns that they've that they know and have learned um in action and they start to think like oh it's not so much so fearful of a pattern as like i thought it was okay i understand this and you will see you'll also be able to see like the students who get it and the students who are struggling a little bit and the students who are just like um and i feel like if you come up with a goal for the students during this time period it helps you to stay focused throughout the year and not be like oh i have an idea of something that i want to do let's just switch gears completely and do this thing because i think they'll have fun with it um instead when you have those moments you'll think wait no i still want them to learn this thing um let's try to incorporate that idea into what we're already doing um so yeah i hope this video helped i feel like i kind of just rambled for most of it and i feel like i only said like basic things um if you guys have very specific questions please 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 ask me questions in the comments below and i will definitely reply um i am hoping to make a few more videos like this throughout 
um, the next two months ish before the school year starts specifically again for the teachers who are coming in in February and March who are teaching for the first time and need a little bit of help <laughs> so please um, you know comment and Go follow me on Instagram. I'll reply to your DMs too. I, I have time. I have the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, see you guys in my next video. Bye. She's a type to make you hesitate. Tell her at a party. How you doing? What's your name?